and I love Marie Antoinette. That's a fictional, or not fictional, she's real. Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with some Christmas festive songs. So welcome to the week before slash of Christmas, we are going to be doing all of the Christmas videos and this is the beginning. The beginning is a tag. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. So as I've been doing this month, I'm doing a lot of like end of the year kind of videos, but I do have some Christmas specific things that are coming out and they are all this week. So prepare yourself for all of the festive. But we're starting off the week with a fun Christmas tag. And this one was actually created by Haley over at Haley and Bookland and it is called the Christmas Songs Book Tag. Now, she does amazing Christmas videos. She does one, well, at least she has been doing one every single day of December. Crazy, right? Um, so definitely check her out. And this is one that she's done a couple of times. So I will, I think, leave, I think the most recent one, if I could find it again, down below, because she's done this a couple of times. And the first time she did it, there was only about 10 questions. And then the next time she did it, she added a bunch of questions. So I'm going to be doing the newer one because there are more questions. There are 14 this time. And I will leave them all linked down below. And if you would like to play along in the comments, I would love to know some of your festive answers. But let's get right into it because these are some pretty awesome questions. Like I'm very excited about these. So the very first question is, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Name a villainous character you can't help but love. And for this one, I could choose none other than the amazing Kaz Brecker from the Six of Crows duology. I freaking love this human. He is one of my favorite people, fictional, ever. Like, I love him so much. Um, and he's definitely a villainous character. He doesn't have a lot of qualities that would lend him I guess to be a good person but he is good at heart you know like once you learn his backstory and stuff he is a sweetheart and will kill and die for the people he loves so I love him I do he's so sweet I just want to hug him I mean he'd kill me if I tried to hug him but I just want to hug him so he's for sure my answer because like I would kill or die for him you know like immaculate the next one is All I Want for Christmas is You. Which book do you most hope to see under the Christmas tree? And for me, I mean, I freaking love books, period. Y'all know this. That's why you're here. Um, and I always have a wish list going. I definitely keep it in all of my videos, but I do that mostly for like friends and family and like myself to keep track of like what I'm actually interested in. I go through like constantly and clean it out. But Right now, in this moment, as of filming, I would have to say that I'm most interested in, what is it called? Uh, the Shadow of the Empress by Nancy Goldstone. Now, Nancy Goldstone is one I've talked about on the channel before. Where she writes nonfiction about, like, different parts of history, but she writes it in such a way that's very interesting and kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat. I've read a couple of books by her. And this one follows, I believe, the mother of Marie Antoinette. Um, and I think it does, you know, Marie Antoinette and her sister also, like, plays a part in this book, but I think it's mainly following her mother. That's a character or a person in history that fascinates me and I don't know that much about them. So I just, this is her newest book that's come out. It came out earlier this year. Well, it actually came out a couple of months ago, um, but it is really fascinating. So I'd love, I'd love to dive into that one next. She has quite a few books that I would love. Like she's got one about Joan of Arc and other like princesses out there. But um, I don't know, this one just is calling to me the most, you know? The next one is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Name a character that overcomes major obstacles and learns to believe in themselves. So I have two answers because, um, of course I do, but I have one that's for people who really like, you know, like the, the, the make you think, the make you feel books, and then one that is for the feel good, you know? So the one that makes you think is our main character, Corinne, and who I was with her with by Nita Tendall. This is a story about grief and loss. It follows our main character, Corinne, as she grieves the death of her girlfriend. However, they were secretly dating for a year, so no one knows about them. But she does find comfort in the ex-girlfriend of her girlfriend, and they kind of like create this bond. Um, but Corinne learns a lot about herself along the way throughout this book. And it's definitely like, you feel for her, she's grown a lot throughout this book. And tons obviously of major obstacles of like no one knowing that she is gay, and no one knowing 
about this girlfriend and having to kind of like conceal her grief a little bit and then also just dealing with grief in general so she does overcome quite a lot and this is a stunning story it's also um this author's debut and i believe they're coming out with some stuff soon they've been hinting at writing for a while so we'll see when we get another one by them but i adored this one and then for people who want like more of a feel-good book i would say the secret is it the secret life of lydia bennett that's not right the epic adventures of lydia bennett um and this follows the character of Lydia Bennett but it follows her in the realm of like this the Lizzie Bennett Diaries which was a video series on YouTube and then they also created a book in this series following Lizzie um and so this one takes place after the series and it follows Lydia's adventures and she has overcome quite a lot in the series it's it's really like it is a really retelling of Pride and Prejudice but it is a retelling in the sense of like it's more about family, it's more about sisterhood, that kind of thing. Um, and I liked the different themes throughout this book. So I liked watching Lydia because in the series she is this huge party girl and then obviously some things happen and she has to not really do that so much. And it's just the events that come after that. And it's really, she overcomes a lot, you know? But it's a little more lighthearted um, because Lydia is, a, is an adventure in herself. So those are my two, I think, for that one. Then we have a Santa Claus is coming to town and there are two parts to this one. The first one is which character do you think would be on the top of the naughty list and then which character do you think would be on the type, top of the nice list. So the naughty list. I'm going to go with Anne Putnam Jr. from the Wicked Girls book by Stephanie Hemphill. This is kind of a reimagining of the Salem Witch Trials. Now this is a fiction book so it does kind of take liberties with the original source material but it is based on real people and a real time and I say Anne because the way this book is written makes her kind of a bad guy it makes her seem like she's making everything up and she's the reason all these witch trials and all these people die and it's really interesting to see kind of her a little bit because uh, it's, it's, she's not the main character she's not the character that the perspective is from um, but she's a major part of the story so it's really interesting to see her in this book but she is not a great human so she is going to be at the top of the naughty list but at the top of the nice list is Arthur from The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. He is the guy who owns this house that our main character goes to. So I'm sure many of you know what this is about but this follows Linus who is kind of like the equivalent of a social worker in this world um, and he goes to all of these orphanages that house magical children and just to make sure that everything is up to code and everything is good to go and they don't need to be shut down and they're doing what they're supposed to. And he's sent on a special mission to this house. He discovers a lot about himself, a lot about the world, a lot about the, you know, company he works for, stuff like that, reevaluates re a, a bunch of stuff. And Arthur is the guy who runs this home. And he is, I love him. He is the sweetest little bean. Just wanna hug him. And protect him um so he's definitely at the top of the nice list he is one of my favorite characters i got these stunning illumicrate editions like look at how pretty this is and i want to immediately reread it like i was going through and adding the tabs to it from when i read it originally and oh my god i love this book so much and he is a cinnamon roll character that must be protected at all costs the next one is Frosty the Snowman, and that is which book just melts your heart? And this is a recent read of mine. I wasn't, I wasn't so sure going into it. I actually read this in October, and that is, if it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat a demon lord. And this is by Hoda, and the story is by Tiroli. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It follows this world where there are people who are adventurers, um, and it follows our main character, Dale, who is one, and he stumbles across this little girl who is a demon and decides to take her in because she doesn't have any guardians, she doesn't have anyone to protect her, and so he takes her in and takes care of her. And it is such a cute little story. I've only read the first volume. I believe there are seven or eight out there, and oh my god, I need more. But like it literally melts your heart as you're reading this story and watching the story and going through it because like he cares so much for this girl and this girl cares so much for him and she just kind of like is learning to be a person basically because she's so young and first off she doesn't understand 
English or like the human language and so she has to learn the human language and then she also discovers cooking and loves to cook and it's just so cute so melted my heart in two must continue with the series I love her she's so cute the next one is Felice Navidad. Choose a book that takes place in a country other than your own. I tried to find one that purposely, I purposely tried to find one that wasn't in the US or in the UK because that's where I read primarily. And so I have gone with this one, which is A Mall Unbound by Aisha Saeed. I read this, I think earlier this year sometime, and I devoured it. It was so good. This does take place in Pakistan. We follow our main character, Amal, um, who's really into school. She loves going to school. She loves reading that kind of stuff. And due to some circumstances, she ends up being forced into this kind of servitude for like the family that is keeping the town together and employed and stuff. And so she's kind of serving the house to pay off her dad's debts. And it's not a happy story per se, but it is a very important story and I like that it's set in this middle grade format so younger kids will get to, you know, see it more. So the next one is It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. Which holiday themed book do you use to spread Christmas joy? Now I always have a book that is themed around Christmas that I read during the month of December. It changes every single year. But one thing that does not change, and I've talked about this many times before on the channel, is that every single year on Christmas Eve, I read Twas the Night Before Christmas to myself right before I go to bed. Um, I don't remember when I started this. It was something I'd started on my own, like many years ago. Like, I'm not even sure my parents realized I did this. Um, but I purposely would take it with me to bed and I would read it before I went to sleep. Um, on Christmas Eve, it was just kind of like a tradition that I had. And it's one that like, it makes me feel good. I love it so much. Um, and I'm gonna do it again this year, of course. Like, I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna do this to my kids once, when we have kids. Like, I'm gonna read it to them on Christmas Eve. Um, so it's just a book that, like, has stuck with me my entire life. I love it so much. It's just a fun little tradition that I have. So that's one that I definitely use to spread a Christmas joy. It's a good one. It's a nice little sweet one, too. The next one is Sleigh Ride. Which fictional character would you choose to spend the holidays with? Um, and I would have to say it was Laura Jean from To All the Boys I Loved Before series. I just think, and like from seeing her in some of these books, that she gets so into the Christmas spirit, especially with baking. And like, we would be best friends in real life. Like, oh my goodness. I love Christmas. I love baking around Christmas. I, we would be, we would be biffles. We would just be in the kitchen making cookies or brownies or whatever Christmas treat we are in the mood for and I just really think that she and I would go all out together and it would be fantastic. So I have to say Laura Jean like there is no other answer. The next one is Baby It's Cold Outside. Which book do you <laughs> I didn't finish this before I picked it. Um which book <laughs> do you not like that you would sacrifice to the fire to warm yourself in the cold? So I don't have a physical copy of this one, but I would buy a physical copy so that I could burn it. And that is the story of Lee, which is actually a manga. I read the first and second one last year, this year? I don't remember. I read them. Um, and um, they were just really boring and kind of stupid. And I really didn't like them. And I think they were actually like racist at times too. Um, so all around awful and I did not like them. So don't own them, thank goodness, but I would burn that series in a fire. I'd buy them and then burn them. So the next one is, do you hear what I hear? Which book do you think everyone should read? So for me, it is this one, which is George by Alex Gino. However, this is getting a revamp. So the new name, I'm gonna pop it here, is going to be Melissa. It's coming out next year in this new cover. They're revamping it because they want to obviously stop dead naming this character and they thought to kind of show their love, they would, you know, revamp the cover to be the correct name for our character. Uh, I'm curious what they're gonna do as far as like, in the book because this name is never in the first book. It is in the second book, um, which is Rick, but it's never mentioned in the first book. However, anyway, so this book follows our main character. I'm gonna call her Melissa from now on, Melissa. Um, and she is 
she knows that she is a girl. However, when people look at her, they see a boy. And it takes place in fourth grade. And in fourth grade, what they do is they read a book and then they put on the play of it. And so in this book, they read Charlotte's Web. And Melissa really, really, really wants to play Charlotte. But because everyone sees her as a boy, she's not allowed to do so. And so it's her and her best friend and kind of like her telling her, her friends and her family and kind of starting to come out a little bit and then like seeing the reactions and just kind of being her true self and it's really short as you can see it's a very fun book it is made for younger kids um so like that you know elementary school kind of age whereas rick is set in a middle school so a little bit older but i just i will never stop recommending this book and it's kind of like sequel almost which is Rick. I think they're amazing. I think it's really important for younger kids to see representation like this. Um, so yeah this one for sure. I will never stop. Sh I will never shut up about it. It's amazing. Everyone should read it. The next one is Where Are You Christmas? And this is a book you want immediately that isn't out yet. So this one <laughs> I want Sense and Second Degree Murder by Deza Price. This is the kind of sequel to Pride and Premeditation. I say kind of sequel because it is a series. There's going to be three books in this series that are all Jane Austen stories with a murder mystery twist. However, again, they have nothing to do with each other. So this one is obviously based on Sense and Sensibility. Um, and I don't remember exactly the details of this, but it doesn't come out until I think March or April of next year. And I freaking loved Pride and Premeditation so much that I need this one. It is almost killing me that I don't have this. It was such a good book and I want to continue. Um, and then there's going to be a third one which won't come out until the year after that and that is called Manslaughter Park. I mean what better name, right? So that one. Um, I got a little angry there. I apologize. But I'm so excited. I want it right now. I wanted it yesterday. I wanted it last month. But here we are. That's my answer. The next one is Last Christmas, and that is a book you started out loving but didn't end up liking. And for me, I'm going to go with Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I read this a few months ago, and I didn't love it. I loved the beginning. I loved the first half of the book. It does kind of have this Mulan slash fashionista, fashion runway kind of thing, because it is a kind of fashion competition that takes place um and she goes our main character goes under the disguise of her brother so you get that kind of very fascinating I don't know it was it was very interesting because I loved the competition I loved seeing all these different people and all the different mediums they had to work with because they had to work with some really bizarre things and I absolutely loved it but that was only the first half of the book. The second half went in a completely different direction that I did not appreciate and ended really weirdly and I was not excited about it. Um, so yeah I loved this book at the beginning and then it just went off course. It went weird and I didn't like it so yeah, it's gone. I didn't, mm-mm, mm-mm, no thank you. The next one is Blue Christmas, and that is a book that made you cry. So I have quite a few because I um, tear up at the weirdest things. But for me, I'm going to go with The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I talk about this a lot, I know, but it's because it was such a surprise for me. I did not realize that I was going to love this. I'd read one book by V.E. Schwab. I didn't really particularly like the writing, and I wasn't sure what to expect when I stepped into this one and I was blown away by it and I just sobbed at the end. I can't even explain. There's a very specific thing that no matter what happens, if it's related to this specific thing, I will start bawling and that's what happened in this book and I can't even tell you what it is because it'll spoil the ending. But like I mm, sobbed. I think I finished this at work, like the audiobook of it, and I had to like, I had the hardest time having to like force myself to not cry in the middle of my office because like, oh my gosh, so oh my god, sobbed, 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 and then I came home and cried. So, um, it was so good, but yeah, it does make you cry, but like in a good way, you know, like it's a cathartic cry, kind of. And the very last one is A Marshmallow World, a fluffy book. And for me, I'm going to go with the Tea Dragon Society books. This is the first one. I do believe that there are three total, one about a tapestry and one 
a festival, the Tea Dragon Festival and the Tea Dragon Tapestry. I don't remember what order it's in, but this is the first one and it has some of the cutest like illustrations in it, but also like it has some of the most amazing rep I've ever seen. So this is definitely a graphic novel for younger readers, but it has such incredible rep. It has such cute people and dragons in it and I love it. Um, but it takes place in this world where there are these little dragons and they grow the little like tea leaves on their backs and then you can pluck the tea leaves and make tea. And they're so cute. And like in the back of this one, it has a little like glossary of sorts where you can go over all the little dragons and what they do and oh my god, I love them. But it's so cute. Um, it's also really fluffy. Like it does have some issues, but like they get wrapped up really quickly and it's just adorable, okay? I freaking love this series. Um, so I'm a little bitter that there aren't any new ones because I've read them all, but I love them. It's definitely a fluffy book, but you will also have your heart melted along the way. So it's all of the things. The sun decided to come out again. So here we are. But that's it. Those are all of the questions for the Christmas song tag. I hope that you enjoyed this video and the kickoff to the week of Christmas stuff. Um, I'm very excited. There's some fun things coming. So this is the first of three videos, so stay tuned. Like I said, I'm very, very excited for you to see the next video that comes out. Oh my goodness. I'm excited for it. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links, so don't forget to check all of that out. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.